Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Orzov Discard. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope your week has started off strong. Happy Tuesday to all of you. Today, we've got a really interesting one. It's Orzov Discard. Uh, now, last week, we actually played a couple different Orzov decks uh, to varying degrees of success, depending on how you look at success. Uh, and so, unfortunately, we didn't really do a great job there. But this week, I'm optimistic. We've got a really cool pile of cards here for you guys. This is brought to you by Power Dragon, by the way. Power Dragon, thank you so much, as always, uh, for sharing over on Aether Hub. The goal of this deck is to discard as much of the opponent's hand as possible while controlling the board, and then ideally taking over uh, with some really powerful long-term spells or just some good, solid mid-range threats. Uh, so to talk through some some of the the discard elements here, we do have concealing curtains. This is a great early game play. Uh, slows down a lot of the mono red decks and things like that, which we do see quite a bit of. So very very helpful. We do have virus beetle, which it comes down discards a card. We've got the court official, which does a very similar thing, and then the raven man. So anytime a player discards a card uh, at the beginning of each end step, create a one one black bird token. Uh, we also have Liliana, which can come down, discard a card immediately, which is quite good. Uh, and then finally, kind of at the top end here, but we do have Junji, which worst case scenario, when Junji dies, we can make the opponent uh, discard a couple cards as well. Uh, now, as far as some of the controlling elements, we do of course have that farewell at the top. We've got Path of Peril. Liliana and the Wandering Emperor both play kind of dual roles. So Lily, discard and sacrifice. Uh, the Wandering Emperor removal plus just kind of board presence. So overall, this helps take over the game as well. Uh, we do also have Destroy Evil for a little bit of a removal piece uh, as well. Uh, for some recursion, we have got Phyrexian uh, Missionary. This allows us to, to return a creature to our hand from our graveyard if we paid that kicker cost. So a very helpful little card. The Restoration of Iganjo helps to bring stuff back and also, uh, again, kind of uh, build that board presence over time. Sarah Paragon allows us to replay quite a bit as well. And then, of course, the Cruelty of Gix, that final one bringing us back uh, another creature if need be. We do have Graveyard Trespasser as another way of just kind of dealing with the board and presenting kind of a, uh, a, a mid-range threat that hopefully is either going to discard a card and need a removal spell or just start to slowly kind of grind our way back into the game if we find ourselves against an aggressive deck, which hopefully we've been able to remove a few of their creatures with that. Uh, a couple of non-bows with the Graveyard Trespasser, in particular all of the Exile makes it a little bit tricky. However, I think generally we will obviously find a place that we can exile, start to exile some cards from the graveyard, and even if it's our own, I don't want to do that, but you can. Uh, Extraction Specialist is very important as well. This helps to bring back some of our lesser mana value creatures, whether those be some of our discard outlets, concealing curtains, whatever it might be. Uh, we do have that availability, and then of course it works great with things like Rite of Oblivion, which we can use to then exile whatever we brought back if we just don't need it anymore. Uh, really helps us to be efficient there without kind of impacting our board. We do have four Rafine's Tower here as a little bit of a tech piece to draw some cards if we need it, and that's really it. I mean, Abandoned Mire and Ganjo are also in here, but pretty straightforward uh, as far as the land base goes. And again, it's a really exciting deck. I think Power Dra Dragon did a great job here, so I'm excited to jump into it. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. We don't run into mana issues. I really, really hope we don't. Uh, we'll do the best we can. We do have 24 lands, which to me seems a little low, but I didn't want to change the deck from Power Dragons. I want to take it as it is and do the best we can with it. So we will, uh, and I'm excited to try it. So let's go ahead, let's jump right in. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. We do have a re relatively decent start. We've got that turn two virus beetle, which is quite nice. Uh, so very solid turn threes, no matter what land we draw. So hopefully we can draw some lands. I know I have always said that. Uh, I feel like a lot for the past handful of decks, but we will see how it goes. Uh, looks like the opponent's on black. Very good. All right. Uh, easy start for us. We just drop the virus beetle and hope that they don't kill it. Uh, the reason being, if we can keep it around and use the right of oblivion to get rid of a threat on their side, it would be quite nice, but they do have a cut down. Regardless, they are still going to have to discard a card here, uh, which is nice. Uh, it looks like a land on their end. 
Uh, I'm assuming just straight mono black. Uh, potentially zombies, maybe. That'd be interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and graveyard trespasser. I don't think there's a huge need to overthink this. I'm actually just gonna take that cut down out of there as well. Um, this just allows us, again, it, it's difficult for them to remove. If they want to, they are going to have to discard a card here, which is exactly what we want. Uh, looks like a Wrecking or Bank Buster. And you can already tell that discard is really strong in just removing so many of the threats that they have produced. Or not even just threats, but resources. I mean, they are down on resources here, which is great. Uh, it's exactly what we want. So very, very good. Uh, that is scary. Don't love that. Uh, we may have to make a move there, but we'll see. All right. Um, so I'm going to discard the Raven Man. Uh, and then let's bring back the Virus Beetle and just get that last card out of hand here. Uh, what this also allows us to do... Ooh, I'm glad we did that. I'm going to go ahead and exile the uh, Shieldred as well. Shieldred's not a card I'm really interested in fighting. Uh, over the long term, if we don't get rid of it, that's just one of those cards that they will get the value out of and we won't be able to really deal with it. Now this is quite nice because now we have got a little bit more to work with. Let's go ahead and play Extraction Specialist. This is going to bring back, I think, just the Virus Beetle again. I'd like to keep removing threats from their hand as best we can. Obviously it's just a land, but I'll take it. That's a land that they don't have, so I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, curious to see what they actually get rid of in our hand here. Um, they don't have to choose anything, worth noting. Uh, but looks like they will, and we get another virus beetle. Uh, kind of helpful to, to get a little bit further into the deck, and the opponent just gives up right there. We did get to see the discard element there. We were stuck on mana, but we were still able to make it work. I'm hoping that we can continue that pattern. Let's see what we can do in game two. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. This is definitely an easy keep. Uh, we've got quite a lot of very solid two drops here, and then, of course, that graveyard trespasser as we need it. Uh, so this should be a perfectly reasonable start. We're against Kitty Fallen. I don't know who Kitty Fallen is, but great name. Uh, let's see what we can do here. It looks like they're taking just a little bit of time to decide what they want to do, which is totally cool. We'll go ahead and lead on the Swamp here. Uh, swamp represents, I think, a little bit more in general, and I don't want to use the cave if I don't have to. Interesting. Um, so this is something to consider. We actually don't have to worry about it, I guess, right away, though. Let's go ahead and Virus Beetle first. Uh, they're not going to be able to activate this on the upcoming turn. What that allows us to do is we can just use Destroy Evil on this uh, as we see fit. Looks like they discarded a No Way Out. Okay, so they are also going to be discard, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I'll just discard a Virus Beetle. I think that's fine. All right, let's go ahead and run you out. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take the opportunity. Uh, actually... Hmm. Let's, uh, let's be a bit mean about this. So we'll play our own, and then we will pass. Uh, yeah. So what we are going to do is as soon as they hopefully pay the mana for that Concealing Curtains, uh, we can just use the Destroy Evil to kill it before it actually has the chance to flip. Interesting. Okay, well now I will just go ahead and kill it, because there's not really a reason not to. We do have to take a damage, of course, but it just means they're not drawing a card here, which I think is more than worth it. Uh, and now, again, they are kind of down on resources. I'm going to take the free block here and not trade so we don't give them a card. Uh, I think that's probably for the best. Let's go ahead and Graveyard Trespasser here. I think this is actually the more beneficial play for us. Let's get the, uh, the curtains out of there and we will just pass. We'll see what they are up to this turn. Uh, a little worried about this Morbid Opportunist from the perspective of they definitely are going to be able to draw some cards off of this, but uh, that Graveyard Trespasser should give us a little bit of a leg up here. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and activate this, I suppose. 
Uh, yeah, we are definitely just gonna get rid of that. Drop you. Um, and I'm just gonna attack him with both of these. This can't block, obviously, so that's not really a worry, and we'll just get that invoke out of there. So I'm assuming they're gonna wanna block something here, which is perfectly fine, uh, but I think we will be okay on everything else. We'll see. They are gonna get to draw the card, of course, but... Yep, they can't block the uh, eye without double blocking, by the way. It does have a menace, worth noting. Sure, draw your card. Uh, this does flip, which is great. And again, it's just difficult for them to deal with it. Sure, Shakedown Heavy is a little scary, not gonna lie. Uh, but this is just too damage. We're just gonna let it through. I'm not not overly concerned. They do again draw a card off of this, but they're really not in a great position to remove any of our cards here. So I'm feeling relatively good about that side of things. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to attack with both of these if I can click. There we go. That was weird. Um, <laughs> let's exile you. I don't know why the uh, things are going a bit slowly. I'm actually gonna exile one from our graveyard as well, just to gain max life here and deal max damage. So if they wanna trade the shakedown heavy, great. Um, if they don't, also great. They can also double block the eye to kill it, uh, which is fine, but we'll then take the opportunist down with us, so cool. They are really holding on to this little guy, uh, which is probably a very fair thing to do, but we'll see. I would love to hit um, really any large scale threat here. Uh, sure. Uh, that's annoying, but again, at this point in the game, it's not as scary as it could be. Uh, only from the perspective of like, we are dealing a lot more damage than they are, they are dealing. So uh, let's go ahead and throw the Sarah Paragon out. I'm anticipating they can kill this, but we're gonna force them into killing it this turn. They may also just invoke again. No, they're gonna go for a pointed discussion. Interesting. Kind of a kind of a, a scary call to do that at this point in the game, but sure. Uh, definitely just sack this. We get to replay most everything from our, our graveyard here, so like I'll super kill the lily. Or honestly, I don't even think we kill the lily. <laughs> I truthfully don't think it matters that much. Let's get this down. We'll take that graveyard trespasser. Um, yeah, I don't think we care about the lily at all. It's not like, yeah, it makes us discard a path of peril, but like, we're not looking to path of peril right now. Um, that's scary from the perspective of if they kill a card, they draw, if they kill a creature, they draw a card, which puts them up to four life. Uh, which just makes it more difficult for us to actually get through the last couple points of damage. And here, they didn't even have to do that. They just get to blood token. Completely forgot they had a blood token. Cool. Yeah. Well done. And we have to discard that path. They're also going to discard a card. But again, I don't think that's really going to matter right now. Okay. Uh, Wandering Emperor would be the win. Um, it would allow us to throw a counter on the Paragon and then kind of get the win off of that. We did not get there. Um, we do have creatures in our graveyard though, so I think we can win regardless. So we attack with both. We go to our graveyard, we'll get rid of a Sarah Paragon and now we just win off of the Sarah Paragon. I think that's it. I don't know why they're quad blocking here. <laughs> okay, sure. Does not matter at all. And we win. We got there, guys. That was phenomenal. That's exactly what we wanted. A little bit less on the discard end that time around, of course, but we did still manage the win, which was awesome. Very, very happy. Let's move into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Not 100% sure about this hand, but I do think we can keep based on the fact that we have the restoration. Uh, that does allow us the opportunity to pull a land at some point. Uh, little 
not stoked about the double lily. That does kind of lead me to want a mulligan, but I'm gonna try it. Uh, I think it's okay to try this, but again, I don't think this is an optimal hand at all, uh, but we'll do the best we can. Oh, excuse me. Uh, guys, it is a good time to remind you that we do have our Brothers War giveaway going on right now. If you are interested, it's a really good opportunity for you to get some ha get your hands wow, on some free cards uh, if you are interested. So what we are doing is we're offering five free ways to enter. Uh, details, of course, are in a video here on our landing page on YouTube or there is an article on our website at resolvesmtg.com that will give you kind of all the details of where the freebie entries are. There's also two bonus entries if you happen to be a Patreon member or a YouTube member, uh, either one of those or both, you actually get an entry for each of those as well. So just a re quick reminder, if you are interested in picking up uh, that free booster box, there are a lot of ways you can enter. We encourage you to do each and every one that you can. If you can't do all of them, of course it's okay. But uh, we are really excited about this giveaway. We're really excited about this set. I think it's gonna be a really great set. Uh, this sucks. <laughs> Uh, I really like Pilfer. I was a little surprised that it was not in this deck. Uh, interesting they took Lily considering we have two. Uh, one thing to note, anytime you've got like a legendary spell like that, um, it's obviously not always bad, but generally speaking, it's a little bit tricky to take one of them because the second one's kind of not that great anyway. So unless you're double discarding, uh, which is perfectly great, it's not that helpful to actually you know, get one of those out of there. Um, you'd rather, I think, get something that you can't necessarily replicate, if that makes sense. Uh, I am just gonna drop a Lily. Just gonna get that creature out of there. They've already invested a little bit of mana. We don't want them attacking with the Bank Buster unless they just have another creature. Uh, but we kind of want them to invest in it, and then eventually we can just kill some stuff, so. I think that's fine. They drew a card, which is a good sign for us. Excellent. Let's do this. Um, what do we want to do here? Uh, let's do this. He's going to pull a land for us. Now I'm going to make us each discard. We'll just discard a land. That's fine. Uh, we actually can get this land back thanks to um, the the restoration here if we'd like, but we truthfully don't have to. Like, I kind of want to see them invest a little bit in this and then we just be able to kill it later on or something. I think this is an okay path. It may not be, we'll see. We have the Wandering Emperor to deal with this though, so. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm actually gonna discard the Missionary and then bring it back. And then I think we are just going to go this route. So let's get that out of there. And the Missionary plus the Wandering Emperor is actually quite a nice little combo. Not not combo, but it's just a nice little two card uh, mini combo where you get to plus up on the Phyrexian Missionary and then hopefully lifelink your way into a lot more life. Obviously they got to kill it there, but truthfully I think that's fine. I'm not... Not overly concerned by any means. Um, yeah, let's Graveyard Trespasser. That seems pretty good. Um, we'll get the Evolved Sleeper out of there. And we'll attack for two. So now we have that Destroy Evil. So if they do find a way to suit up that Bank Buster, that's fine. We have a way to kill it. Or we have a way to kill this, which is a much more concerning threat. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Definitely just gonna kill that. Curious if they attack in with the Bank Buster here. Technically they can, uh, but it looks like they may not. All right, cool. Uh, let's let's pass, let's go to end step before we do this. Okay, now we'll do this. Just in case they could have activated in response before the attack and then been able to actually get the attack in. So I think it's better for us to wait there. Uh, this is great though because graveyard trespasser should be able to kill this then they they can crew this but this is why you wait till the end of the turn so they're not given the opportunity to crew it pre-combat uh cool all right that's a dead shield rid, which is super helpful uh 
Yeah, let's go ahead and virus beetle. Why not? <clears throat> we'll save the extraction specialist, I think, here. I don't see a... Truthfully, we probably didn't need to virus beetle, but gives us a nice little sack if we need it. Opponent definitely taking a little bit longer than they maybe need to, but that's okay. It wasn't too bad. Let's get Shieldred out of there for sure. Get an extra little creature, and we'll deal a little bit of damage. All right. So next turn, they are facing uh, quite a bit of damage. Definitely lethal, um, unless they can find a way to really do some damage this turn. Um, that's not going to do it, which is great. That also is a useless card. <laughs> Uh, which is great. <laughs> um, this will be our last game, by the way, guys. I know this one might be... Uh, it's actually not too much shorter than normal. Uh, so that should be fine. Goodness. I don't know if you guys are getting the screen stutter that I am, but it is massively terrible. Let's go ahead and exile this. And yeah, you can crew that if you want. That's fine. Um, yeah, so they block what? One thing. I wish we had enough mana to do this. I don't know what is going on with the network, by the way, guys, but uh, it's bad. It's real bad. Um, I'm actually going to attack with that. Yeah, so let's attack here. If they kill this, it's great uh, because we've got the extraction specialist and they've only got two cards in hand. So I, I know this is weird and aggressive. I think it's actually fine. I don't know what is happening, guys. It is stuttering like crazy on my end. So I hope it's not too bad for you guys. At least my commentary should be fine. We'll see. <laughs> cool. All right, let's see what they can do. Looks like not much if they're drawing a card here. That's a very good sign for us. Okay. That's not going to do it. Uh, and in fact, we can just kill that. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do this. We'll discard or sack the beetle. Holy crap. I don't know what is going on, guys. That's terrible. Uh, hopefully, it's really not that bad for you guys. I have no clue what it's going to look like, but it'll be fine. All right, let's get the attack in. Uh, I will actually kill our own beetle just to get the extra damage in. Just make sure that we've got as much going through as possible. But six, seven, eight. Yeah, we should be fine. I think that's game. Uh, that's three straight in a row, isn't it? That's an undefeated run, guys. Heck yeah. Uh, very, very well done with this Orzhov discard deck by Power Dragon. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys. So again, first and foremost, I just want to say a huge thank you to Power Dragon for putting this list together and finally breaking our terrible having no land streak. For some reason, that was a thing last week. Uh, this week, or at least with this video, that wasn't the case. And we were able to get a three row run, a three in a row run uh, with this list. It was a really good one as well. We got to showcase a lot of what the deck is trying to do with that initial discard and then mid to late game take over. We did not see it face off against stuff like mono red, which I think would be an interesting matchup. I don't know how that would actually pan out, uh, but this certainly has the tools to deal with it. It's just a matter of getting them on time. So uh, highly recommend trying this deck out. I, again, I think Power Dragon did a really good job with it. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you all for being a part of the It Resolves community as well. I know this is like kind of a touchy feely thing, but it really does mean a lot to us that you guys are here, that you guys are participating in the giveaway and hopefully enjoying uh, all of the gameplay, all of the live streaming, all of the stuff that we have got going on. It's a lot, I know, but we are doing our best to get as much out for you guys as possible and we really do appreciate the support. So thank you all very much. Have a fantastic day. I will hopefully see you guys again tomorrow for another gameplay video.